Hi, my name is Patrick Kilty, and I'm a faculty member in the Faculty of Information here at the University of Toronto. And um, I'm going to try to take up as much uh, or as little space as I <laughs> can on this panel as the cis white gay man. I'm going to take up as little space as I can so that we can move on to more speakers and then open it up to the audience. And I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, one class here at uh, the University of Toronto. It's, it's offered in the, um, uh, the Bonham Center for uh, Sexual Diversity Studies and cross -lit listed with the Women and Gender Studies Institute. Um, and it's uh, called Feminist and Queer Approaches to Technology. And it's just one class where uh, trans issues arise um, in a context like technology studies where you, you, you may not uh, assume that it arises, but it does. And I'll just talk about a few uh, things that we, 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 uh, we a few projects, scholars, um, and artists that we talk about in class. Um, one uh, is the LGBTQ uh, uh, Digital History Collaboratory, um, and it's just one of many projects that we talk about um, that relates to issues in the digital humanities and um, digital archives and the ways in which trans people leverage digital technologies to um, um, disseminate, record um, the knowledge about trans stories. Um, there are similar projects at the New York Public Library and the University of Victoria, University of Minnesota, um, and I know J.K. Rawson at, I think he's at Mount Holyoke now, yeah. or, um, right, um, uh, also has a digital online archive um, um, for trans histories. Um, we talk about new media artists. Um, one new media artist we talk about is uh, Micah Cardenas. And um, Micah has uh, for many years been doing work on um, new media art and writing about new media art and specifically trans issues as it relates to um, new media uh, um, representations and in uh, trans technology art, um, algorithmic uh, curation, algorithmic art, and uh, you can find a lot more about Mika at her website here, uh, which is just, uh, oh, this is the faculty website, but uh, she's at uh, uh, the University of Washington at the moment. And um, we talk uh, a little bit about uh, Anna Anthropy, a video game designer who uses open source platforms to create video games that um, sort of get outside the traditional modes of production and consumption of the mainstream video game industry. Um, this platform is Twine. There's a lot of open source platforms that, um, that uh, video game artists and video game developers use um, to create video games that tell stories or to reinvent the video game in a way that the mainstream video game industry right doesn't. And so I'll just quickly go through one of her games is about sort of intimacy. Well, it could be about any number of things. You can sort of interpret it many ways. Um, I sort of see it as about intimacies, the fleeting um, 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 moments of intimacy. And uh, uh, basically, it's a story. And you get to sort of work your way through it. Um, but there's a kind of timer. And it's called. Um, Queers in Love at the End of the World, and it's all of this is um, sort of open source and available online, and um, you can uh, go online and play some of uh, Anna's games yourself. Um, so I'm going to hand it over and uh, give us some more time to um, hear from some more of our panelists, and then uh, later open it up for questions. Great. Thanks very much.